Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. This is part two of lesson 6.3. We've got three objectives for this video. We're gonna write vectors as linear combinations of unit vectors. We're gonna find direction angles of vectors, and we're gonna use vectors to model and solve some real life problems. So a unit vector is just a vector who's got a length or a magnitude of one unit. And the way we get a unit vector is, let's say we're dealing with vector v then what we would do is we would take v divided by its magnitude and that would give us this u vector which we're calling a unit vector in the direction of v. So we've got this vector v in standard position at negative 2, 5. We are going to find its unit vector and then show that it has a magnitude of one unit. So in order to find this unit vector what we're going to have to do is find the magnitude of vector v and remember we use a distance formula kind of idea with that since this one is in standard form i'm just going to take the square root of that x value squared plus our y value squared when we do that we should end up with 29 underneath a radical so the magnitude is the square root of 29. now if we take our vector v which is that negative 2 5 vector and divide it by that square root of 29. What we end up doing is taking each individual piece of our vector and dividing it by that square root of 29. It works a lot like that scalar multiplication that we talked about in part one. So we end up with this negative two over the square root of 29 and five over the square root of 29. And we're gonna call that our vector u since this is now a unit vector. But I guess let's go ahead and verify that it is actually a unit vector. So let's find its magnitude. So we're going to take the square root of that x value, which is negative 2 over the square root of 29. And we have to square that and then add on 5 over the square root of 29. And we're going to square that value as well. So remember, when we're squaring a fraction, we square the top and we square the bottom. So with that first fraction, we end up with 4 over 29. Plus, then we've got 25 over 29. So we get the square root of 29 over 29 once we add those together, which is just the square root of 1, and the square root of 1 is just 1. So this u vector is in fact a unit vector for vector v. There are two standard unit vectors. There's this i vector, which is 1, 0, and then there's this j vector, which is 0, 1. And any other vector can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors. We've got these scalars v1 and v2, which are called horizontal and vertical components of our vector v. v1 is the horizontal component, v2 is the vertical component. So what we're looking at, if we're writing out a linear combination of these two vectors, what we do is we take our v1 horizontal component times that vector i, since that one has the x value or horizontal value, plus our v2, which is the vertical component, times that j vector since that one has the y value in there. When we add those things together, it's called a linear combination of vectors i and j. So in this example, we've got u being the vector with the initial point 2, negative 5 and terminal point negative 1, 3. What we're going to do is we're going to take this vector u and write it out as a linear combination of those i and j vectors. And what we have to do first is get this vector written out in component form. So remember, what we do is we take the x value from the terminal point minus the x value from the initial point, and then do the same thing with those y values, terminal minus initial, and that's going to help us build this component form vector. So for our x value, we end up with negative 3. For our y value, we end up with 8. So we get the vector negative 3, 8. And now in order to write this out as a linear combination of i and j, remember i contains the x value. So what we do is we take that negative 3x value times i plus our 8y value times j, and that's our vector u as a linear combination of i and j. In this example, we've got two vectors. We've got vector u, which is that negative 3i plus 8j vector that we were just working with, and we've got vector v, which is 2i minus j, and what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what 2u minus 3v is. So as far as this 2u goes, we're going to take 2 times that vector u, which is negative 3i plus 8j, and then we're going to subtract off 3 times our vector v, which is 2i minus j. What I'm going to do is a little bit of distributive property. So if we distribute this 2 through this first vector, we get negative 6i plus 16j. 
Over here, we've got a negative 3 that I'm going to distribute through. So negative 3 times 2i is negative 6i, and negative 3 times negative j gives me plus 3j. And now we're just looking at combining like terms. So negative 6i and negative 6i is negative 12i. 16j plus 3j gives us 19j. So there is our new vector. Now if vector u is a unit vector, then the terminal point of vector u is going to lie somewhere on the unit circle. Because remember, a unit vector has a length of one unit, and our unit circle also has a radius of one unit. So if we're looking at this vector u in component form, it's got an x value and a y value. Well, remember from the unit circle, the x value represents a cosine value, and the y value is our sine value. So if we wanted to write that out as a linear combination of i and j, it would be cosine of theta times i plus the sine of theta times j. Now that angle theta that we're dealing with is called the direction angle. If we're dealing with a vector that's not a unit vector, so say we're dealing with vector v, but it points in the same direction as our vector u, which is a unit vector, then v is just the magnitude of v times this unit vector u. And if we think about our scalar multiplication that we did in the last video, we could just distribute this length to those cosine and sine values. So writing that thing out as a linear combination, it would be the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta i plus the magnitude of v times the sine of theta j. So what we're going to do in this example is find the component form of a vector that represents the velocity of an airplane descending at a speed of 100 miles an hour and at an angle of 30 degrees below the horizontal. So we've got a picture that will help us illustrate this. Here's our plane descending at 100 miles an hour, our 30 degree angle below the horizontal. Now I'm going to label some things on our picture. I know this is 30 degrees below the horizontal. Well remember that horizontal angle is 180 and if we go 30 degrees past this we're really dealing with a 210 degree angle. So now that component form that we were talking about on the last page was the magnitude of v times the cosine of our angle theta times i plus the magnitude of v times the sine of our angle theta j and theta represents our direction angle so there's where our 210 comes into play for the magnitude of v that's going to be our 100 miles per hour that's how fast this plane is going so that's the length of the vector so filling in some information our magnitude of v is 100 and then we're going to do the cosine of our 210 degree angle multiply all that by i and then i guess we've got this 100 again times the sine of our 210 degree angle, and we're gonna multiply that by our j. Now if we check out the unit circle, the cosine of 210 degrees is negative root three over two. So we've got 100 times negative root three over two i plus 100, the sine of 210 is negative a half times j. If we simplify this down a little bit, we can reduce this 100 and the two. The 100 becomes a 50, the two becomes a one. So we get negative 50 root 3 i plus these things also reduce down to 50 and 1. So we get, so we get a negative 50 times j. And if we want to write this out in component form, we're going to grab that negative 50 root 3 as our x value and that other negative 50 as our y value on that vector. If we want to head the other direction and figure out what the direction angle is, so let's say we've got vector v as ai plus bj, then what we would do is the tangent of theta is b over a, and then in order to find our theta value, we would just have to do the inverse tangent. So on these examples down below, we're going to find the magnitude and direction angle of each of our vectors. So looking at vector u, we've got 3i plus 3j, if we do the magnitude first, so the magnitude of vector u, we go square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared. So 3 squared is 9 plus another 3 squared is the square root of 18 as the magnitude. If we want to find the direction angle, then we said the tangent of theta is equal to that b value, which comes from our j value, so 3 over our a value, which is also 3. So this is saying that the tangent of theta is 1. Rewriting this one as an inverse, so we go theta equals the inverse tangent of 1. There's two places this happens on our unit circle. 
This happens at 45 degrees. It also happens at 225 degrees. But looking at our vector, we've got a positive x value and a positive y value, so that has to be a first quadrant angle. So it's not 225, it's the 45. For our next one, vector v, let's do the magnitude first. So magnitude of v is equal to the square root of that a value squared plus that b value squared. So we get 9 plus 16, which is 25. Square root of that is just 5. Figuring out our angle theta, we would go tangent of theta equals our b value over our a value. Rewriting this one as an inverse tangent, I'd go theta equals the inverse tangent of negative 4 thirds. Now this one does not show up on our unit circle, so we're going to have to plug this into our calculator. When we do that, we get the angle negative 53.1 degrees. This angle is in the fourth quadrant since we've got a positive x value and a negative y value. If we wanted a positive angle for this one, remember we can just add on a 360 degree rotation. So we get the angle 306.9 degrees. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.